bald, robed monks in the mountains of China doing seemingly incredible, almost unrealistic levels of superhero body weight strength and skill. Ever since we were children, we were fascinated by Shaolin. And then a small whisper in the back of our minds, could we achieve such levels? The answer is yes, and we will explore precisely how in five elements. The Shaolin monks are known for their impressive feats of strength, agility, and discipline. Through rigorous training, they have developed an unparalleled level of physical and mental control. Interestingly, many of the principles and techniques used in Shaolin training can also be found in the bodyweight strength training of power batics, which we'll compare. From the iron fist strong enough to break stone, to the acrobatics of handstand walks downstairs, drunken style fighting, and flipping and flying through the air on concrete. From the animal styles, like the tiger, crane, leopard, snake, praying mantis, eagle, monkey, and dragon, to the regional styles, like southern with its powerful stances, and strong upper body, and northern with its powerful kicks and aerial acrobatics. And then the whisper beckons us further. How do we do this? How did this develop and can we achieve it? There's a vast array of elements that comprise Shaolin training and it would be remiss to attempt to uncover them all. Be that as it may, we can at least break down five key elements. These elements are elements we use at Pacific Rim Athletics in power batics training. And the first is flexibility. You will find Shaolin monks training from a very young age, training flexibility like splits, bridges, and floor acrobatics that they maintain until old age, or you'll see old monks with white hair still able to do handstands and splits. But this flexibility is very difficult to build. It is not impossible, but it is difficult. Children will have a difficult time dealing with the work that it involves. Adults often give in to fears that they can't do it or they're too old. This is where mental discipline comes into play, both in the short term and the long term. The short term is sitting in splits and having someone pull you, or having weights on your back, or sliders under your feet for one, five, even 10 minutes or longer at a time. In the grand scheme of things, this is very short, but in the moment, it feels like eternity, and your ability to block out pain increases over time. And that's the long term, repeating this without injury over long periods of time. Not weeks, not months, but years. The legend of Shaolin begins in the little forest of the Henan province at the beginning of the 6th century AD, from which it gets its name Shaolin, meaning little forest, with its history like the winding roots of a banyan tree. An Indian monk named Buddha Bhadra started training a small handful of disciples in Buddhism, which flourished into the building of the Shaolin Temple. But interestingly, its history mimics the foundations of Christianity. A single teacher, a handful of disciples, elements of self-sacrifice, discipline, and empowerment growing slowly as it transforms the world. As we build Pacific Rim Athletics, this is the exact paradigm I try to follow as well. And this is the first part of the how. The how begins in community, your five closest people. For Buddha Bhadra, this included Hui Guang, Sang Chao, and Hui Ke, the legendary first monks of Shaolin. Stories circulate that three decades later, another monk, Bodhidharma, came to the temple and introduced martial arts to the monks. Whether Bodhidharma is the originator of the martial arts at Shaolin is as shrouded in mystery as any aspect of human history. Others say the Shaolin styles were built out of necessity by the warrior monks during the warring and tumultuous Su dynasty to defend the temple against bandits. This gave rise to the 18 methods of Lohan, then historical silence for centuries until the Ming Dynasty's documentation of combat weaponry and advanced fighting knowledge for which pilgrimage by military experts was regularly made. During the 1500s, the Woku arose, who were pirates that attacked the Chinese coastline in wave upon wave of invasion. The Shaolin monks were enlisted by the droves to defend the country from these invaders. And in typical fashion, as governmental power escalated and centralized, and as any opposing or conflicting institutions are eliminated, so too was the Shaolin Temple destroyed in the 1600s by the very country it protected years ago. And war after war saw the Shaolin Temple repeatedly assaulted up until and through the 1900s with the warrior Shaolin monks taking part in countless missions of defense, protection, and battle. Eventually, the temple found re-establishment as a cultural icon and Shaolin monks continue to train until this day. So, just like physical training of body weight, strength, and skill is of necessity for health, confidence, and defense, many aspects of Shaolin arose out of necessity. Buddhist philosophy underlies Shaolin training with strict adherence to, to ascetic discipline. This discipline is not unique to Shaolin, but it is unique to much of Western culture with all of its distractions and vanity that lead to mental disorders and physical breakdown, where an elite professional athlete can amass a fortune, fame, and accolades and end up depressed and poor right back where they started. But if one were to take the discipline, humility, and high-level goals presuppositional to a Trinitarian worldview and spread that across long periods of 
of time, you will arrive at feats of strength and skill similar to the Shaolin monks, and sustainably so, just like them. The second element is strength. Shaolin showcases tremendous levels of strength, like hand balance, incredible levels of condition, relentless static holds to discipline mind and body. Just like building flexibility, it takes the short term blocking out of pain over the long term of years. It's like the old parable of the child monk who had a young cow, a calf. The child monk also planted a seed in the ground to grow a tree. Every day the child would hold the calf and jump over the tree, day after day, month after month, year after year, until the child was a full grown man holding a full grown cow, jumping over a full grown tree. And we do see this happening with people jumping from building to building, doing standing double backflips, jumping further than ever in recorded history. Sometimes these feats stem from positive goals, humility and discipline. Other times from vanity, ego and self elation that gives rise to all sorts of other problems later in life. But it does happen. We call our strength training and power batics ninja strength and it works in stages in exactly the same way as the parable of the child monk and cat. Progression by progression, level by level. The third element is the mental aspect including self transcendence. Now this can go the way of the occult which will also create problems. On the other hand, everyone wants to transcend themselves in some way. Merely growing up into an adult is a form of self transcendence. Well hopefully anyway. In Christianity it is called sanctification. Not being conformed to the patterns of this world but being transformed. And yes this includes mind and body. Which is the secret mystery of body weight strength training and which Shaolin excels in. Ultimately it boils down to focus, abstinence from impurity and hard work that transforms the Shaolin monk or the individual who practices such methods. The fourth element is the forms. Katas in Japanese and Kuen in Chinese. The form is a pattern of movement. Strength is developed by static holds similar to calisthenics. Reps of skills build coordination, power, flow, concentration and every other aspect of physical toughness culminates in the form Kuen or Kata. Like millions of forms can trace their ancestry back to Shaolin. They can include weapons, they can be soft or gentle or very explosive. Sometimes they mimic animals, other times they emphasize striking and stances or acrobatics and agility. Including forms like Shaolin or powerbatics into training will set you apart in your physical and mental development. And the fifth element of Shaolin is of course the fighting. Sometimes fighting is necessary for self preservation and fighting does not only involve punching, kicking and grappling, it involves weapons, multiple people, endurance, deceptive tactics and evasion. These principles are found scattered throughout all of the training of Shaolin. From the mental toughness to the agility of acrobatics to the hidden elements inside the forms. But the one most important principle is disciplined work carried out over long periods of time. So yes, we can achieve Shaolin level body weight strength and skill and we take concepts and embed them in power batics training at Pacific Rim Athletics. But it will remain mysterious on many levels even when you go down your journey including as you go on your own journey down the path of the unknown. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the trainings all of our top students receive. Opt in so that you can get access to our team, PDFs, training materials and even competitions and special events like the one coming up in Spain. See you in the next video and in training soon.